So, after some consideration, I thought it would be a good idea as kind of a portfolio or something to show. I thought it would be a good idea to show the program that I've been working on for my trading over the last year or so. So here it is, and we've got the imports on the top. Um, first, you'll see the data gathering. So I fetch the data from a website that offers it for free. It's uh, very complete, not many missing data points. I download the one minute data for the Forex pairs that you see here. And I'm only um, combing through these three pairs at the moment. I don't really go into any of the other pairs or the exotics or anything like that. So I have a function here that gathers the pairs, parses the data from the comma separated value sheets, and combs it into high, low, open and close uh, data frames. And then you can see the data calls here, or the function calls here, organizes it, and gets it ready for the later stages. So these are the initial parameters um, that I have here. I optimize these through Optuna and hyperparameter optimization. Each one of these has a range of values that it picks from, and it's rather large matrix of possibilities. So it's a lot of data to comb through. Um, but it runs one trial at a time, and it figures out what is best. And then here are the indicator functions, and I use TALib, which is a technical analysis library for Python. And I get that through um, VectorBT Pro, which is a paid um, program offered on GitHub that I found that's for vector backtesting. Now, even though vector backtesting would make it a lot faster, I do go through um, the backtesting one by one by the index by the minute. So this is simple, moving average, slow, medium, fast. And then it shows um, a comparison between the levels and whether it's long or short if the slow is at the bottom, the mid is at the mid, and the fast is at the top. That would be a long indicator. And then if it was the opposite, it would be short. I have um, an average true range indicator. I have RSI. I have finding the lowest and the highest of the past so many periods, which is something I use along with Will Fract, which stands for William Fractals which is an indicator in technical analysis. You can look it up. It pretty much indicates where there is a peak and a valley. So I use those to trigger um, what would constitute as a highest and lowest of a backtesting period. And then you'll see that um, VectorBT Pro allows you to create indicators grouped up in a little package that you can run and uh, it spits out a data frame. So I use this and I put it into the form of an expression. And then you can see I have all the other ones here. And then clean signals. Now what this function does is it creates a bunch of um, NumPy arrays because it's running with no gill so it's faster. Um, and it will comb through each index one by one. And it also comes through each column, which could possibly be um, different pairs if you wanted it to be. But I just run through one pair at a time once it chooses a pair to test. And this is the entire trading logic in this function. So you have all the indicator values in the data frames. And then it goes through the logic and it marks where there is an entry. It marks where there is an exit. It marks different conditions so that those conditions can be later passed on to the pipeline, which I've just named it pipeline 6MB. Um, but this is what actually takes the marked values from cleaning uh, the signals and applies the uh, portfolio buying and selling.
so this is where like the price and the fees and the free cash and the value of the portfolio and the position size and the debt size and all that gets calculated so it goes through that it spits out and order records um, this is where the indicator functions are called and right above that it fetches globals that's something else for um, Optuna but I have it in this notebook just to keep things consistent it resamples everything to one minute and it fills the NA values with the placeholder it resamples it and then it uses that placeholder to know where to put the NA values back into it and how to uh, forward fill and everything between then has the um, entry conditions exit conditions which as you can tell it's just it's basically you know it's nothing special but it's certain values that it must cross over and vector bt pro has this nifty um, cross below and cross above so you don't have to get crazy with the comparison logic um, you can just plug this in and it'll give you the um, data frame with the correct values and then you have the clean signals call and the pipeline call everything must be turned into a two-dimensional array so that it has columns and rows to go through and I just keep that for consistency and then you have the portfolio wrapper and then you use this um, call PF to print out all these beautiful stats with um, total return benchmark return total gross exposure etc etc all the different uh, indicator ratios that are used for portfolios typically um, and then this is a, just a list of all the metrics that you can use and I have some individually marked so that I can see them here is the equity curve over the period that we're testing and then you take the numpy arrays and you turn them back into data frames so that you can use plotly to show where all the signals are being generated and to show the indicators and I will show that part next so we are taking the saved pair that I have up in the starting parameters and we're t we're, we want to see a date between November 16th and December 1st and it basically sets up three windows that are combined with the candlesticks the RSI entry the RSI exit and here are all the different markers and the levels that we have set up with the colors and the widths of the lines and we'll switch over to the offline plot that it spits out as an HTML file here that is pretty basic so you have all the values over here and this is quite a while worth of time so we gotta like zoom in and I don't like the size of that I don't like how that looks so zoom in like this and it has the MIs it has the directional bias indicators um, has the markers for the entries and where take profit would be typically um, these parameters are not as optimized as you can see um, but say we were in an uptrend and the uh, MIs or MAs were indicating that it would buy based on the RSI it would reach liquidity and then it would sell at a certain RSI exit uh, parameter and it would do that over and over again just like seen here until um, the trend changes and then hopefully it would switch to going short based on the MA and that's just really really simple trend following strategy and this is just one strategy that I could hook up with the same infrastructure uh, I just wanted to give a brief showing of how you would manipulate the data get it into the program and then generate the output based on vector PT's pro um, portfolio uh, based on the logic that you put through the screening of the data 
and these are one minute charts so that's all for this one these are this is the notepad that I use to brainstorm and test out different variations because I can run it block by block and see how it performs, um, see what it outputs, see that the logic is correct. Uh, I have another script that is Python for specifically going through as many trials of the parameters as possible. And then I also have a live script that's hooked up to the Exchange uh, API and that has push notifications to my phone that tells me when I enter and exit. Um, it has all the same logic as from the notepad, and then it has a couple API functions for executing trades, for closing out a portion of a trade, for closing out of the whole trade, and then a bunch of um, tries. It, it has error handling, it has network um, error handling. I run this on a cloud server so it doesn't have very connect, uh, very many connectivity issues. Um, and that's pretty much my tech stack. So if you have any questions feel free to message me about this but this is all I really wanted to show for um, my trading activity and the coding that goes on behind it. I'm hoping to have a video like this for um, all of the projects I've worked on in the recent years, but um, we'll start with this one and see how it goes. Thank you. So here is the script for hyperparameter optimization, like I mentioned in the last video. It uses Optuna, that's the library. Um, there's other libraries for machine learning, but I learned this one first and it suits all my needs for now. So um, you suggest the suggest functions. Um, it's choosing the parameter, the lower limit, the upper limit, and then the steps that you can test or get the value between those limits. For uh, choosing the pairs, it's categorical. And you can see in some of these are ints, some of them are floats. And then you have a list of all the global parameter variables along with the testing stage and the objective value. So if you go down all the way to the bottom, very long file, I like doing things this way. Uh, I'm, I know my way around it. So the Optuna optimization, you create a study, you have all the variables, uh, the parameters and what it outputs in this file which it saves after each iteration of the testing stages. And if there's an objective value that is higher than the last testing stage, it considers that uh, a gain and it will resave a text file with the results. And it only does this if the objective value is higher than what is already in this file, the JSON file. So it keeps things organized and you can kind of see you know where you're at with the progress of it um, you choose how many trials that you want to run and how many of those trials are a random sampling so right here I have the number of trials at 1000 and then it takes the testing stage and it multiplies that by 100 and adds it to the 1000 so as the testing stages increase the number of trials it runs increases, theoretically producing a better and better result with the more trials per testing. I did this because too many trials, it slows down. It's not about um, the matrix size, it's about how much it's searching to find the optimization parameters that it needs in order to run the next trial. It slows down. So in order to have as many, like cast a, as wide of a net as possible, I split it up into different trials completely and different studies. And I run those over and over with a different amount of trials set by the testing stage. I hope that makes sense. I've done it a few different ways and I found that this is the best way to go. So I do that. Um, this chooses, these are lists of 
the different kinds of parameters that it can pick from. It randomly samples them and then it runs through them. This is the optimization run logic between each trial. So you see the study, it has to maximize the objective function value. So that is what each one of these trials spits out, uh, an overall result, which is seen here. So it gathers the portfolio, it does a couple of filters, so it clips or prunes certain trials that don't fit near the parameters that we want. Um, it, get it gets rid of those trials, it discards them, and it only keeps the ones that are remotely close, and that's set by these different things. So I am filtering by trade duration, which I want to be under 48 hours, and then the trade count to make it significant with the amount of trades. I want it over a certain amount of trades. And I found that increasing the count also lowers the time frame that the, the trades activate on. So I'm trying to keep that low. And then the constraints for the trials are basically hard constraints for below this number, get rid of it or count it as less valuable above this number, it's fine. It's a normal trial that we'll consider. And then the return value is this Sutono ratio, um, which is the objective value that we're trying to maximize. Um, so it's pretty much the same as the, um, the notebook that I showed from the last video. So it runs through the suggested parameters here it fits them into a global variable after choosing it with the Optuna suggest functions. It matches the pair and then it outloads the pair to use for the, uh, the price data frames. This is all logic so that it um, only uses a certain amount of the portfolio total value and splits them between all the different entries so that it, um, it has different amounts per entries because this strategy has five different entry points. And if it finds that the second entry point is the most valuable one, it will put more of the portfolio's percentage into that one entry than the other entries. It, it makes it pretty, pretty uh, flexible towards what is best. And... That's pretty much how the Optuna works. You can see that the logic is all in one function. So it, it calls these things before. These are the functions that are that are put into memory. And then here's where the objective actually starts. And it places the trial. These are the default values for the constraints. Pulls the global var variables runs through the general um, parameters for choosing that, runs through the short parameters, the long parameters, finds the uh, indicator values, maps the indicator values, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how I run the studies. And it outputs them into um, a database which is local and it's named this with the testing stage and it uses the um, tree optimization which is the default for for Optuna and it has the most features available for it like the constraints and such and that's all thank you for watching